Good afternoon, fellow tech nerds. My name is Savannah Peterson, coming to you from theCUBE's remote studio here in Motown, Detroit, Michigan, where we are at KubeCon. John, this is our 12th interview of the day. How are you feeling? I'm feeling uh, fresh as the first interview. <laughs> As always. <laughs> that delivery really implied a, a level of freshness. Let's go, no. <laughs> it's only one, day one, in three days. Reinvent, we go hardcore. These great events, we get so much great content. The conversations are amazing. The guests are awesome, they're technical, they're smart, and they're making the difference in the future. So this next segment about scale, my sequel should be awesome. I am very excited to introduce our next guest who actually has a Twitter handle that I think most people, at least of my gender in this industry, would love to have. She is at a tech girl, so you can go ahead and tweet her and tell her how great this interview is while we're live. Please welcome Deepthi Segaretti. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. You're, you're fitting us in, you've got two talks you're giving while we're here? Yes, yes, so tomorrow we will be talking about VTR, myself and one of the other maintainers of Vitess. And on Friday, we have the Vitas maintainer talk. All graduated projects get a maintainer talk. Wow, so you were like a KubeCon VIP celebrity. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a maintainer technical lead, also a software engineer at Planet Scale. But talk about the graduation process, what that means to the project and the people involved. So, uh, Vitas graduated in 2019, uh, and there are strict criteria for graduation. And you don't just have to meet the minimum, you sort of have to overperform on the graduation criteria. Some of which are like, there must be at least two uh, large production deploys and people from those companies have to go in front of the CNCF committee that approves these things and say that yes, this project is critical to our business. A lot of peer review, a lot of deployment success. Yes. Good consistency in Community, the Community diversity. All that. All those awesome. things. Talk about the, the importance of this project. What is the top story that people should know about around the project? Why it exists, why it's important, why it's relevant, and why it's cool? What's the, mm -hmm. How would you answer that? So, uh, MySQL is now 30 years old. And yet, there Makes are still... Makes me feel still... old, sidebar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and yet, even though there are many other newer databases, it continues to be used at many of the largest internet scale companies. And some of them, uh, for example, Slack, GitHub, Square, they have grown to a level where they could not have if they had tried to do it with vanilla MySQL that they started with, and the only reason they are where they are is Vitess. So that is, I think, the number one thing people should know about Vitess. And the origination story I, on notes say came from YouTube. Yes, so, so the way Vitess started was that YouTube was having problems with their MySQL deployment, and they got tired of uh, dealing with <laughs> The site being down, so the founders of Vitess decided that they had to do something about it, and they started building Vitess, uh, which started as a, a pretty small, relatively, yeah. code yeah. base with limited features, and over time they built sharding and all of the other things well, this, that we have today. This is exciting, uh, Savannah, because we've seen this industry like with Facebook when they started. They built all, everyone built their own stuff. MySQL was a great. Oh gosh, and was, everyone wanted to build it their way, reinventing the wheel. And MySQL was great, and then as it kind of broke when it grew, it got retrofitted, so it, it was constantly being scaled up to the point where now you guys, if I get this right, said, hey, we're going we're gonna to work on this. We're going to make it next gen. Right. So it's kind of like next gen MySQL, almost. Yes, yes. I would say th th that's pretty accurate, yeah. So there are still large companies which run their own MySQL, and they have scaled it in their own way, but Vitus happens to be an open source way of scaling MySQL that people can adopt without having to build all of, the, all of their own tooling around it. Speaking of that and growing, you just announced a new version. Yes. Today, yes. tell us about that. Uh, the focus in this version was to make Vitus easier to use and to deploy. So in the past, 
there was one glaring gap in Vitus, which was that Vitus did not automatically detect and repair MySQL level failures. With this release, we've actually closed that gap. And what that means for people using Vitus is that they will actually spend less time dealing with outages manually or less human intervention, more automated recovery is what it means. The other thing we've released today is a new web UI. Vitus had a very old web UI, ugly, hard to maintain, nobody liked it, <laughs> but it was functional except we couldn't add anything new to it because it was so old. So the backend functionality kept advancing, but the front end was kind of frozen. Now we have a next generation UI to which in upcoming releases we can add more and more functionality. So you get extensible, we add things in? Oh yes, of course, yeah. Awesome, what's the biggest thing that you like about the new situation? Is it more contributors are on board, the UI? What's the fresh, new impact that's happening in the community. What's getting you excited about with the current project? Hmm. I mean, the UI is great, because usability is important. Right, Scalability right. is important. Uh, I think Vitus solved the scalability problem way early, and only now we are really grappling with the usability problem. So the, uh, the hope and the desire is to make Vitus autopilot, so that, uh, you reduce human intervention to a minimum. Once you deploy it, obviously you have to go through the process of yep. deploying it, but once you've deployed it, it should just run itself. Runs at scale too, the scale, scale's huge. Yes. How many contributors are involved in the project? Can you give some numbers that you have any handy that you can speak to? Right, so uh, CNCF actually tracks these statistics for all the projects and we consolidated some numbers for the last two full calendar years, 2020 and 2021. Uh, we had over 400 contributors and 200 plus of them contributed code and the others contributed documentation issues, uh, website changes and things like that. So How that are the gives... downloads? Downloads good? Ah, okay. So we started publishing the current official Vitus Docker image in 2018 and by uh, October of 2020, we had about 3.8 million downloads, and by August of 2021, we had 5.2 million, and today we have had over 10 million downloads wow. of the main image. Starting to see <laughs> a bit of that hockey stick that we all like to see. Seems like you're very clearly a community first leader, and it seems like that's in the planet scale and the test DNA. Is that how the whole company culture views it? Are you, would you say it's a community first business? Planet Scale is very much committed to Vitus as an open source project and, uh, and to serving the Vitus community. So as part of my role at Planet Scale, uh, some of the things I do are helping new contributors, whether they are from Planet Scale or from outside Planet Scale. A number of planet scale engineers who don't work full time on Vitus still contribute bug fixes and features to Vitus. We spend a significant amount of our energy helping users in our community Slack. The releases we do are mainly for the benefit of the community and planet scale is making those releases. Because for planet scale, within planet scale, we actually do separate releases versus the public ones. One of the things that's coming up here at the show is deploying on Kubernetes. How does that look like? What's, everyone wants ease of use. Are you guys easy to yes, use? Yes. Um, can you? <laughs> so uh, PlanetScale you... also open sourced a Kubernetes operator for Vitus that people outside PlanetScale are using to run their production deployments of Vitus. Uh, Prior to that, uh, there were Vitus users who actually built their own Kubernetes deployments of Vitus, and they are still running those. But new, new users and new adopters of Vitus tend to use the Kubernetes operator that we are publishing. And you guys are the managed service for Vitus, yes. for the people that, that's the business model for Planet Scale. Correct, so Planet Scale uh, has a serverless database on demand, which <laughs> is built on Vitus. So if someone's starting something new and they just need a database, you sign up, it takes 30 seconds to get a database, connect to it and start doing things with it. Versus if you are a large enterprise and you have a huge database deployment, you can 
migrate to planet scale, import all of your existing data, cut over with minimal downtime, and then go, and then planet and why scale would they, And why would they do that? What's the use case for that? Save time, new development team, or Save time, uh, not being able to hire people with the skills to run it in-house, not wanting to invest engineering resources in what businesses think is not their core yeah. competency. They want to focus on their business value. So it's database as a service in their, whatever they're doing. Yeah. Without adding more costs. Right. And speed. Okay, cool. How's that going? It's going well. Any <laughs> feedback from customers in terms of why, that there are any benefit statements you see popping out? What are the big, What's the big aha when, they, when people realize what they have here? What, what's the aha moment for them? Do they go, wow, this is awesome, it's so easy, push a button, migrate, or is it? All, all of those, and um, people have actually seen cost savings when they've migrated from Amazon RDS to PlanetScale, and uh, we have testimonials from people who've said that it was so easy to use PlanetScale, why would we try to do it ourselves? the best thing a customer could say, right? We're all about being painkillers and solving some sort of problem. I, I think that that's a great opportunity to let you show off some of your customers. So who is receiving this benefit? Because I know Planet Scale specifically is for a certain style of business. Hmm. We have a list of customers on the website. I was going to say you have a really... <laughs> She's a software engineer, she's not marketing. You have a sexy... <laughs> You're doing a great job as a so, marketing. The reason I am bringing this up is because it's clear this is a solution for companies like Square, SoundCloud, Etsy, Jordan, and other exciting brands. So when you're talking about companies at scale, these companies are very much at scale, which is awesome. Yeah. What's next? What do you guys see the future for the project? Uh, <laughs> I think we talked about that a little bit already, so usability is a big thing. We did the new UI, uh, it's not complete, yeah. right? Because over the last four years, we've built more features into the backend which you can't yet access from the UI, so we want to be able for people to use things like online schema changes, which is a big feature of Vitus, doing schema changes without downtime from the UI. So schema management from the UI. Mm -hmm. uh, Vitus has something called V replication, which is the core technology that enables sharding. And right now you can, from the UI, monitor your sharding status, but you can't actually start a sharding from the UI. So more of the administrative functions uh, we want to enable from the UI. Awesome. Last question, what are you personally most excited about this week being here with our wonderful community? I always enjoy being at KubeCon. This is my fifth or sixth in person and I've done a couple of virtual ones. Awesome. Because of the energy, because you get to meet people in person whom previously you've only met in Slack or maybe in our like monthly community Zoom calls. We always have people coming, come to our project booth. We have a project booth here for Vitus. People come to the company booth, Planet Scale has a booth. People come to our talks, ask questions, we end up having design discussions, architecture discussions. We get feedback on what is important to the people who show up here. That yeah. always informs what we do with the project in future releases. Perfect answer. I already mentioned that you can get hold and in touch with Deepthi through her wonderful Twitter handle. Is there any other website or anything you want to shout out here before I do our close? Uh, Vitess.io, V-I-T-E-S-S.io is the Vitess website and planetscale.com is the planetscale website. Deepthi Cigaretti, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. John, thanks for keeping me company as always. You're welcome. And thank all of you for tuning in to theCUBE. We will be here in Detroit, Michigan all week live from KubeCon and we hope to see you there.